Arlington has won the Super 8 Massachusetts State Championship. Live from the Tarkovsky Gymnasium here on the campus of Arlington High School, ACMI Sports presents Arlington High School Boys Varsity Basketball. Tonight, the Spy Ponders of Arlington High School host the Rockets of Reading High School. Hello, everyone. I'm Don Phelan. I'm joined by Rob Anthony. Rich Damas is our sideline reporter. And we're getting ready right now for the Middlesex League action between the Ponders and the Rockets. Spy Ponders come into tonight's game with an overall record of 6-3. and three. They are 6-2 and two in league play. For the Rockets of Reading High School, their record is 4-6 and six with a league record of 3-5. and five. And we're going to get right into the live action. We'll check your starting lineups for you as we get ready to go. For Allington, number 0, Nick Corrales. Number 1, Brendan McNamara. Number 14, James Gascoigne. Number 23, Stephen McGilvery. And number 24, Sam Swift. For the Rockets, number 1, Jovan Nortellis. Number 11, Matt Sinella. Number 24, Danny Beckenhaus. Number 33, Patrick Conroy. And number 34, Taylor Marchant. The starting five for the Rockets. Head coach of the Rockets in his 16th season is Paul Morrissey. Of course, the head coach for the Spy Ponders in his 11th season is John Bowler. And the first possession for Reading results in a traveling violation. And Rob, welcome to the telecast here tonight. Oh, thank you, Don. Looking forward to this exciting league tilt and live broadcast. Reading looks like they are in man-to-man -man defense. McNamara in the corner. McGilvery dumps it down to Gascoigne. Ball's knocked away by Conroy, but Arlington able to maintain possession. This is Nick Corrales. Nice pass to McGilvery, and McGilvery lays it in with the left hand. McGilvery found himself wide open and looked like he might have traveled there, but laid it up and in with his left hand very nicely. I think he got away with an extra step there, perhaps as well. 2 0 pawn. His first points of the evening belong to Stephen McGilvery. Allington bench wanting a double dribble. They did not get it, but the shot is missed anyway by Beckenhaus. Allington with the rebound. We have quite a production going on here for you tonight for this live broadcast. Alex Van Thong is here as McGilvery with another basket with the left hand. Kevin Wetmore back in the studio and a host of other volunteers bringing you this live event. Thank you very much, everybody, for all your volunteer work. And nice, work. Looked, looked, nice dish that time by Sam Swift. He drew two defenders to him and found the giveaway open for the wide open layup. Uh, loose ball, got a little short shot there by Marchand. He was unable to connect. Here comes McNamara the other way. McGilvery, not a big score for Arlington, but he has their first four points of this one. Nick Corrales with the floater, no. Marchand tracks it down for the Rockets. That looked like a travel okay. over to Sinel and said Sinel spins in the lane and gets the layup. Good moves, nice spin. Not, not tremendous height, I don't think, on this team for the Reading Rockets, but it looks like they have some beef. So they'll look to guard the interior and kind of rough it up a little bit on the Ponders. Yeah, Beckenhaus looks like he's got a football body. He's uh, Swift went to the basket. Able to convert. Now going all the way to the, tip to the rack, no, is Nortellis. Marchand. Tellus back out to Marchand. He's going to take the three. Around the rim and out. Sam Swift with the rebound for Allison. Nice pace, patience and nice passing that time by Redding, but they can't convert. Allington, of course, riding what is now a 47 game home and winning streak. As Gascoigne hits the three, and Gascoigne, we don't see him step outside often, but when he does, he can be effective. And he swished it home from deep. 7-2 Ponders, five minutes remaining, first quarter. Good start for Arlington. Arlington in the second of a four-game homestand. Big victory the other night against Wilmington. Now reach and foul will be called against Stephen McGilvery. That will be his first and the first on the team. First foul for either team in the first five minutes and 13 seconds of this game. We'll keep an eye on, our me, on the physicality of this game, Don. For the Spy Ponders, both Swift and McGivaray play football, and we look like we have a few ballers uh, for Redding. And 
And an ND by Allenton. Metellus, a little shot there. Look at this coin with the rejection out of bounds. It will remain running ball as Patrick Conroy took it into the paint and was blocked by James Gascoigne. So it looks like Nortellis is a playmaker. He's a nifty ball handler. He can get into the paint. Looks like he can create for others as well. Five on the shot clock for the Rockets. Let's see if Allenton can, not, can hold them down. Nick Corrales with the steal. Nick Corrales. Beck dumps it to McMahon. Shot was blocked by Marchand. And in the rebounding action, Redding knocks it out of bounds. Players were a little uh, bunched up there in the key. Phrase you hear sometimes is mouse in the house. Small players underneath. That time we had three of them. And Redding swatted it away. Yeah, I didn't think that uh, Marchant would have that kind of leaping ability to be able to block McNamara's shot, but he sure did on that one. Unfortunately for Redding, they couldn't come up with the rebound and uh, ball knocked out of bounds. And now Coach Morrissey will take his timeout, his first time out of the game. Spy Ponder's up 7-2, and they've made the most of their opportunities. I don't think they've missed a shot yet, as I, as I recall. And uh, on the other side, Redding having, having a hard time getting a good shot. Senior night tonight, Don? It looks like... Uh, no, no? You, the second person asked me that. No, they've been putting those... Um, we'll get a shot at that later on underneath the Allington. Um, well, right now it's the Reading offensive basket. They have these, I don't know, like almost full size, not full size, but pretty good size pictures of the Allington players. And uh, kind of a cool thing. Very cool. Gascoigne in the paint. It's it back out to McGilvery. Allington will reset the offense. Brendan McNamara has not scored yet so far. 10 on the shot clock. McNamara thought Gascoigne was going to go to the basket on the pick and roll, and he did not, and so the ball is out of bounds, Reading ball. Too bad that time, Don. I thought that Gascoigne did have the roll. If he could read somehow McNamara's mind, he might have gotten an easy hoop. Now Nortellis took it to the paint. No. Gilbert with a good rebound. Swift. Head of the pack to Gascoigne. Loose ball, great hustle by McGilvery to come up with it. McNamara baseline drive up and under. No, and he'll go to the line for two. McNamara going into the into the teeth of the defense among the trees, showing a lot of courage there and rewarded with the harm. He'll go to the free throw line. McNamara, good free throw, good free throw shooter. Ponders have a chance to extend their lead. 3.30 remaining, first quarter, Arlington lead remains 7-2. First substitution of the game for the Quantas. There'll be two of them, actually, as number 35, Jelani Joshua, and number 10, Miles Hess, checking in the Ponder lineup, replacing Stephen McGilvery and Nick Corrales. So you think I jinxed him with the uh, proclamation that he's a good free throw shooter, Don? Well, let's jinx Patrick Mahomes and say he's a great NFL quarterback then. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> Chiefs and the Patriots square off on Sunday. One of two for the sophomore guard, Brendan McNamara. The Allington lead is now 8-2. Reading with just two points more than halfway through the first quarter. Inside. And a crime violation is committed by Danny Beckenhaus. McNamara playing uh, solid defense against Sanella at the at the point, and Redding is taking a long time getting in, getting into their offense. Just going baseline, a little floater, half hook shot, if you will, no good. Rebound by Conroy. Conroy is a load down there. It's going to be hard for Gascoigne to get that shot. Hess almost got a little, little way, a little push there in the back. Not enough contact for the officials to call. 12 in the shot clock for the Rockets. Oh, a little spin move into the paint is by Conroy. No, but he's fouled on the play. Looks like Redding wants to try to do their damage uh, underneath. So far, the spy ponders have done a pretty good job protecting the tin. Gascoigne picks up the foul, his first, second on the team. And the first free throw is no good by Patrick Conroy. Senior forward for the Rockets. One of two. 
College, who leads 8-3 with 2.38 remaining first quarter. McNamara went for the back door, it wasn't there, Gascoigne wise, he didn't throw it away. McNamara, you know the teeth of the defense, tilts a little pull up jump shot and knocks it down. Nice move by McNamara, getting an open shot and, uh, and burying it. He could be the quickest guy on the court. Arlington leads at 10-3, their largest lead of the game, seven points, and a back door cut by Sonelli, blocked by Gascoigne. Here comes McNamara the other way for the partners. Nice little bounce pass into Joshua. Didn't work, Reading ball. Big block that time, get by Gascoigne. Coming up, coming up strong and swats it away. And he'll, uh, he'll, he'll, he'll take the, uh, Ooh. take the bench, but he's doing work tonight. Well, nice pass on the inbounding play, but uh, Nortellis unable to convert the layup. And that's going to be a foul, I believe, or perhaps just out of bounds, let's see. I think the Reading play was out of bounds when he touched the ball, so just a turnover there, yep. and it'll be Arlington ball. Ortelis has good moves, he uses both hands, he gets in the lane, we've yet to see him finish. Has not finished. Arlington substitution, number five, Elon signs Grant into the lineup. He placed James Gascoigne, McNamara for three from the corner, no rebound for Conroy. McNamara showing, showing some confidence there, ouch. Swift went for the steal, We've got a piece of the player as well. He'll pick up the foul. Speaking of football, Swift is a defensive back in football. I think his instincts may have taken over on that one. Yeah, no doubt. Looks like Nortelis is going to be okay, but uh, that was a little bit of an ouch. Nick Corrales back in the Allington lineup, replacing Brendan McNamara. Minute 32 to go, first quarter. A little muscle move there by Beckett House, no. He just powered his way to the rack there. Didn't get it to go though. Stolen by Marchand. Good cans there by the junior Taylor Marchand. A pull up shot there by Sonella. No good. Rebound by Hess. One minute remaining, first quarter, 10-3 ponders. And Arlington defense has really kind of stifled this first quarter. A large crowd here tonight for this boys, girls, varsity doubleheader. And now Jelani Joshua is called for traveling. It is a nice crowd, uh, by it looks to me to be a very full house. And we are, of course, on uh, what we sometimes call the bird's nest, high above the southern sidelines. And I got to say, heat rises. Oh, yeah. So now Sam Swift had pointed out to one of the officials that um, Jovan Nortellis maybe had some blood, and that might have been the result of that foul that Swift committed. So Nortellis is forced to come out of the game. It looks like he's bleeding maybe from his chin. He just gets a, some kind of tape or something from the trainer, but he's not giving the trainer any love at all. She's trying to help him, but he just wants to go to the bench and huh. she's trying to get him back in the game and doing what she's supposed to do. That's the trainer Meg Foley for Arlington. And now a... It's been a rock em, sock em game already, Don. 13 points with 29 seconds to go in the first quarter. It's a, uh, it's a pitcher's duel so far. Fourth foul for the Ponders. Nick Corrales picks that one up, his first. Redding has committed just the one team foul, and because of that foul, the shot clock resets, and the shot clock is now off. Redding elects not to go for a final shot, and instead they go inside to Beckenhaus, and Beckenhaus creates the contact and will go to the line for two. Joey Pazzi thought he had good position there. It was... Uh... Well, they called it on signs Grant, so oh. maybe Joey did have good position. Yeah. So Sines Grant picks up his first, fifth on the team. So that's the one problem right now facing the Ponders is the team foul situation. Five for us, only one for them. Beckenhaus unable to hit the first free throw. 0 for 2 for the big fella. Conroy there for the rebound. Sonell is going to take the three. Probably would have been wise to hold for a final shot. Now let's see if Arlington holds for a final shot. 12 seconds to go in the quarter. 
Corrales is going to take the three. Looks good. Round and out. Joey Pazzi with the rebound. Put back no. Rebound fought for. Marchand's going to launch it from three-quarter court. Well, maybe just half inside a half court by the time he shot it. Comes up empty, and that'll be the end of the first quarter. At the end of the first quarter, Arlington 10, Reading 3. We're going to kick it down to Rich Thomas for some sideline reporting. Some good points by by Richard, I think, and uh, you know the spy punters until are in this position where until Redding kind of proves that they can hit shots and proves that they can score, they can collapse a little bit in the paint and make it tough for them underneath. So far, Redding hasn't provided the proof. It will be Allenton ball to begin the second quarter on the alternating possession rule. They lead it 10-3 as we start this second quarter. Check the five for the Ponders. That's Jelani Joshua with the ball. Now that's Elon Signs Grant. And he passes off the Reading player out of bounds. Also number 10, Miles Hess. Number 21, Joey Pazia. Number zero, Nick Corrales. The five for the Ponders. Hey, like, played by Cena. It's Grant tossing the ball off of the knee of the rocket there. He's a little bit trapped. Like one substitution for Reading during the quarter break. Number four, Tim Sahajian into the rocket lineup. Four on the shot clock. Joshua will right to the basket and lay it in. Well, what an effective play there by Allington as they use the entire shot clock. And just when it looked like they weren't going to be able to get off a shot, Joshua just put his head down, went to the basket and laid it in. Good recognition of the time by Joshua. Three-point shot there is good. And that is Tim Sahajian. You gotta wonder where that's been. That was a nice looking rainbow switch by Sahagian. Sahagian with the three pointer. Only the second basket for the evening so far for the Rockets. First three pointer. Doubled their point total with that one shot. Joey Pazzi, looks like he took some contact and he lays it in anyway. Joey Pazzi, you see, he tries on contact that time. Look to, look to have kind of knocked him, knocked him forward, but he still had enough. Uh, you know, presence to put the ball in the hoop. And now the break in the action by the referee stopping the game to bring down the net on the last three-point made, three-pointer made by the Rockets has allowed substitutions to be made. And for Arlington, that gets James Gascoigne back into the lineup. And for Reading, it gets Jovan Nortellis back into the lineup. So interesting development there as both teams get to get one of their starters back in the game. Usually the game is not stopped for that, but the referee elected to do it that time. And here again, oh, but un unable to convert is Sahajan, but Sahajan gets his own rebound and the loose tr tracks down the loose ball. And Natellis thought about it, now he takes it, misses it, and by that time it was too late. He probably should have jacked it up the first time he got it. A couple of good shots that time for the Rockets, but they can't convert. Partner playing top man. Science Grant fakes, he's bottled up. And they're going to call a foul against Redding, a non-shooting foul. It will be Arlington ball on the baseline. They're going to call that a uh, fl floor foul at this level. I guess the bias is towards calling it a floor, floor foul as opposed to a shooting foul. That one looked awfully close to me. <laughs> Coach Morrissey didn't want any foul at all. He's talking to one of the officials in a kind way. He was real trying to chance to talk to him before the game. He's a pretty nice guy, and uh, I told him I'm usually mean to the opposing team's coach, but I couldn't be mean to him. He was very <laughs> complimentary of the ACMI productions over the last few years. In his 16th season, he's been here a few times, so he's probably had a chance to catch some of our telecasts. Well, so then he's one of the good guys. He's one of the good ones. And uh, Joey Pazia 
picked up that foul on the inbounding play. Must have set an illegal screen. So the Palmers now are at the limit. Redding will be shooting free throws for the remainder of the first half. Sahajian for three, not this time. Rebound knocked loose. Conroy comes up with it, and Redding will be able to reset the offense. Well, Richard pointed out at the quarter that Redding has to convert those threes, or the spy ponders are not going to respect it. A pull up jump shot by Sanella is no good. Redding has really snaked it from the floor. They've only had two made field goals here in the first half. We played about 11 minutes. Steal by the Rockets. Rotellis is going to try to go to the basket against Pazia. Pazia will be called for the foul on the drive. That will result in a one on one situation for senior Jovan Nortillis. Talked to Coach Jack Woods before the game. He was expecting a physical game. The physicality has been on the spy ponder side and uh, not the Reading side. And then we'll see if this foul trouble with 5-12 left to go in the half being in the bonus comes back to bite. But uh, Reading doesn't mind being able to get uh, free buckets with no t without running any time off the clock. They will take this kind of foul situation. Put up on the score that the foul was committed by Sam Swift, but I don't think that's right. I think Swift may have reached down oh, and slapped okay. at the ball. So it was on Swift, not on Joey Paz. If a Swift, that's his second. So Coach Bowler will take him out of the lineup with those two fouls. Usually Coach Bowler doesn't like to play his players with two foul with more than two fouls in the first half. And the ball's loose. Gascoigne on the floor. Now it's just a big football scrum there. Redding comes away with it. Nortellis. Unable to handle it cleanly, but he is able to save it. Now we get it back to Nortellis in the corner for Arlington number 20. Philip Cherry Jr. into the game, guarding Nortellis. And the three-point shot there is good by Taylor Marchant. There's that three. They're getting the open ones. That time they hit. So Arlington, as well as they have played defensively so far in this half, they have not been great offensively. They've only scored 14 themselves. Scores 14-9. We're almost halfway through the second quarter. Very, very low-scoring game. I thought Conroy was going to have the steal. Instead, Gascoigne goes to the basket strong. No. And Redding with a chance to cut into the Allenton lead. Tellus seems like he takes that extra step when he gets the ball. The officials will be aware of that because the Allenton bench will make them aware of that. Coach Woods, I could hear him all the way up here. Little floater there, no good. Rebound by Conroy, no. And a timeout by Arlington. Good contest by the Spy Ponders getting their hand up. And uh, Spy Ponders need to need to contest shots but not reach shots, be, reach for shots because they can't afford to make any more fouls. Rich, anything new from down there? Uh, yeah, coach. You know, just from um, you know, just from looking at the game, I feel like ever since Swift was taken to the bench, I feel like it's allowed you know, ready to kind of get back in the game. They're able to get these looks now that you really weren't seeing before. Now they made that one three, but just the fact that they've had a couple open opportunities, I feel like, you know, it might be time to put Swift back in the game, you know, to just kind of make them, you know, just kind of improve the defense a little bit. You don't want to give them any opportunities. You don't want to make, even make them feel like they can start to make those threes because it only takes one to get a rhythm going. It's a tough call for the coaching staff. Thanks, Rich. Staff. Swift, of course, has uh, two fouls, and John Bowler doesn't like that, but uh, at some point, maybe that's something that you think about if the matchups aren't going your way. Absolutely. They could definitely use some easy baskets right now. Thanks, Rich. We'll check in with you later. Let's check the five for the spy partners right now. Number 20, Philip Cherry Jr., number 14, James Gascoigne. Number 23, Stephen McGilvery. Number one, Brendan McNamara. And number zero, Nick Corrales. And uh, Nortellis with some quickness there. Almost had the steal. Matt McGilvery all bottled up. Is able to get it to McNamara. McNamara is going to go to the basket. I don't know if that shot was blocked by Marchant or not. Now in the ensuing action, ball's knocked out of bounds by Arlington. It'll be running ball. We have a lid on the bucket tonight. Both ways. Both ways. 14-9 ponders. 325 to go first half. Three-point shot here is good. 
And that's Owen Mulvey, his first action of the game. And he comes right off the bench and knocks down a three. And all of a sudden, Allington finds themselves up by only two points. Two straight po three-pointers by Redding, and they're heating up. And Coach John Bowler will call a timeout. Uh, no, I've been, Coach Bowler is in his 11th season as coach of the Spy Ponders. I'm not sure I've ever seen him do that before. He is very upset with his team, and he's going to let them know about it right now. He just called a timeout about a minute or so ago, and um, for him to take two quick timeouts like that in the course of, what, 30 seconds of playing time, he must have something to say. Well, Coach Waller at the previous timeout must have been uh, talking about getting out on the shooters and not letting them get open threes, and Redding comes back and has two wide open threes and hits right. them both, and uh, that'll upset a coach every single time. Hey, we yeah. just talked about that, guys. What's what's going on now? Yeah, and as we mentioned, it's been a tough offensive night so far for the Rockets, but next thing you know, you hit two threes, and you're right back in this game. I yeah. mean, to think Arlington is only up by two points right now, the way they've controlled this entire first half. But again, it hasn't been a great half offensively for Arlington either, so let's give some credit to the Redding defense to hold the Arlington offense to just 14 points with 13 minutes played here in the game. No question about it, and Arlington has, hasn't yet established how they're going to get points. A few different players on the, uh, you know, on the board going with a double high post offense right here, and uh, how are they going to get the ball in the hoop? Good defense there. The ball's knocked out of bounds, and the official who was responsible for that sideline was concentrating on something else, so there was no whistle there, and uh, he had to look to his partner for help. Coaching staff said between before the game that Redding plays extremely hard, and we're seeing that right now. Seven seconds only for Allington on the shot clock. A double team guess going on that entry pass, and that's why it was unable to work. Philip Cherry Jr. tried to pass it in there, but the Redding defense knew that was coming. Put three players on James, and Allington turned it over. Now Redding turns it right back over with 2:32 remaining in the first half. Don, I feel like when you're playing against a team that plays very hard, you need to keep your calm, execute, make them pay for the extra effort. So far, the Spy Ponders are not playing as clean a game as they'd like to play. McNamara fakes, and now that fake caused Marchand to leave his feet, land on Brendan McNamara, so it'll be a foul. I don't think Brendan got into the shooting motion, so it will be Arlington ball on the sideline. Third team foul against the Rockets. Arlington over the limit at this time. The 2.22 to go in the first half. That's what I'm uh, talking about, though. That extra effort can be a double-edged sword, and that time, uh, Brennan McNamara, those little fakes, uh, you know, did damage. McNamara, reverse, lefty, no. Rebound for Redding. Redding with a chance to tie or take the lead with a three here. It's turned into a rock fight here at the Toslowski Gymnasium. Inside to Conroy. Conroy double team kicks it back out to Nortellis. 12 on the shot clock. Nortellis to the basket. And they're going to call an offensive foul. Wow, Nortellis had Taylor Marchant wide open under the basket in that possession, but didn't see him. And instead, he charged to the rim and uh, had kind of a had kind of a reckless foul. The punters might have dodged a bullet. Under two minutes remaining, first half. Ponders up by two. I'm not sure if this officiating crew is in sync right now. We'll see how that plays out in the second half. Joshua faking, many fakes, had the chuck blocked by Nortellis. We got fought for, and now a little bit of extracurricular activity. Good job by Brendan McNamara getting his team into a huddle on its own. And the Redding play is separating. I think the foul, initial call, is going against Redding. I think it's going to go against number 33, Patrick Conroy. That was Nortellis and Gascoigne squaring off, squaring off, and I think that was a little bit of frustration. Gascoigne showing his frustration. Every time he gets the, uh, gets the ball underneath, three guys collapse on him right. and fight for the ball, and uh, he finally had enough of that. Yep, Conroy has to come out of the lineup with his second foul. And now a holding foul committed by Redding. So all of a sudden the team foul is starting to even up. And the Pondas will be in the bonus for the remainder of the first half as that is Redding's sixth team foul. So when the little skirmish breaks out, the, the referees didn't call any technical fouls. But it looks like they may try to tighten up this game a little bit. Which, I got to say, could be to the Ponders' advantage on this side of the court. Well, the team fouls at one point were 7-2. Now it's 7-6. So Butch Bola must like to see that. Gascoigne. Little turnaround in the paint. No. 
Nick Corrales fighting for that rebound, went down hard for Arlington number 10, Miles Hess back into the lineup. We got a minute 20 to go on Arlington with just a two point lead. Arlington has only scored four second quarter points and Reading has scored nine, so it's been a very low scoring quarter and game. Nortellis, little push off, goes up and under and in. That's actually Nortellis' first basket of the game, Rob. He's had several attempts at the cup, but he ties the game at 14 with his first bucket of the game. See if Arlington can match the effort and intensity. And there we have it. Gascoigne steps out and hits the three, so it's been a little tough sledding for James down low. So instead, he steps out, hits the three, his second three-pointer of the game. All of his points so far have been from three-point range. And a good answer by Arlington as Redding had come up with the tie, and now Arlington regains the three-point lead. 32 seconds to go, Ponder's 17-14 lead. 10 on the shot clock for the Rockets. Kick out pass, Marchant for three, no. That's Lynn play, that's legal. Rebound by Sonella, and Sonella will go to the line for two. So that's legal because, because it did not hit the top or the top of the backboard is live? All four sides of the backboard are in play. If it hits that black support, it's out of play, or if it goes over the top of the backboard, that is also out of play. But that one just that one just kind of rolled along the top of the backboard and remains in play. Interesting. In and out for Sonella on his first free throw. 16.4 seconds remaining, excuse me, 18.4 seconds remaining first half. Allington by three, an Allington rebound here. I assume they'll hold for the final shot. Redding gets one out of two from the line, but they have not been strong from the free throw line during this half. They've had a lot of opportunities and it's cost them. Sonella does hit one of two. And let's see, I don't know if they're going to call a double foul. Let's see. Double foul. It's going to go against Gascoigne for Allington. And Beckenhaus of Reading. A situation like this, because there was clear possession, the team with the ball retains possession. So Allington will retain possession. Each player picks up a foul. Each team picks up a team foul. And with 11.7 seconds to go, it will be Allington ball on the sideline. Since the little skirmish, Gascoigne looks like he's playing a little bit angry. Some players play well when they play angry. Other, other players have a harder time. Seven seconds. Brendan McNamara, a little push off there with the free hand. Around and out. Nick with the rebound. No. Nick again puts it up. No. But he'll go on the line for two. <clears throat> and if that foul goes against Beckenhaus, that would have been him picking up two quick fouls in the final 30 seconds of the half. And wow, look at this. One tenth of a second remaining when that foul was called. So a break there for Allington. Getting that shot off was Nick Corrales to get the two free throws before the horn for the end of the half. Good job by Corrales staying with it in there among the trees. As a little guy, you're not always used to going up for the board, but he went up aggressively and high and was rewarded with an opportunity to get some points from the charity strike. And the smart coaching here by Coach Bowley has all his players off the lane because the last thing you want to do is pick up a foul or a violation with one-tenth of a second remaining in the half. Nick hits one of two, and that will be the end of the first half. The score, oh, no, excuse me, let's stay with this. They had a lane violation committed by Redding, so Nick Corrales will get another free throw. They still have to put that one-tenth of a second back on the clock, which they have. Good job there by the Allington table to be aware of that and get that tenth of a second up there quickly so there wasn't a long delay. And if you're if you're red and you just want to stick a pencil in your eye, getting a lane well, violation with a tenth of a second, and in in a game that's 19-15 at the half, kind of a uh, somewhere between a football and a, and a baseball score, that one point makes a difference. And Redding just Redding just gave Arlington a freebie. Yeah, and of course it makes a big difference because he hit the uh, the extra free throw. If he had missed it, no no harm, no foul. But by making it a costly point there, given up by the Rockets. Well, that's the end of the first half here at the Tarzlowski Gymnasium. The score at the half, Arlington 19, Reading 15. Rob, Rich, and I will be back with the second half action. It's such a privilege to be able to serve um, as the acting police chief in the community where I've worked for so long and resided. It's Julianne Flaherty's first week on the job as Arlington's acting police chief. This after Frederick Ryan retired this month after 33 years on the job. Flaherty served as an Arlington police officer for 24 years, and she comes with a wealth of experience. 
I've served as every rank in the police department. I was a patrol officer. Um, I worked um, as a street supervisor. I was a lieutenant, and most recently, I was captain of the support and logistics um, division for the past eight years. In fact, Flaherty has served on a number of committees in her quarter century of police work. She was instrumental in the renovation of Arlington's police headquarters building, serving as the department's representative at permanent town building committee hearings. The acting chief is inheriting a very innovative police force, one that takes a more compassionate tone towards the state's opioid and mental health crisis. It's also among one of the first police stations in the country to hire a full-time mental health clinician. As a result, Flaherty tells APN she's committed to maintaining the philosophy of community policing and being completely transparent with the community her department serves. I'm committed and passionate about restorative justice, about um, fair and impartial policing, and about our opiate outreach program and many other mental health programs um, that we've championed. Flaherty was selected from a pool of seven internal applicants, which included police captains and lieutenants. Town leaders say she also serves as an inspiration for any woman who seeks a career in law enforcement. I'm honored to be a role model to women um, in policing, and I'd um, love to see more women hold leadership roles within the Arlington Police Department and other law enforcement agencies. But town leaders say it was clearly Flaherty's extensive experience and her unwavering dedication to the community policing model that got her here. She'll likely serve as Arlington's top cop for at least a year, maybe longer, as the town now conducts a prolonged search for a permanent police chief. It feels wonderful. I'm very grateful for this opportunity. I'm very grateful for the town manager, Adam Chapterlane, for giving me this opportunity. And I'm also very grateful um, to Chief Fred Ryan for his amazing leadership over the past 20 years in Arlington and his um, commitment to the town, to the community, and to law enforcement over the past 33 years. Flaherty says moving forward, she embraces the opportunity to maintain the high standards of what has become an elite police force. For Arlington Public News, I'm Jeff Barnd. This is an historic moment for our town. Working together as friends, neighbors, classmates, and community, we can make this school happen. But town and school officials know all too well they can only make it happen if they get voter approval. Hence, the latest forum on building an all-new high school, estimated at costing $308 million, focusing on what residents will get for paying more on their taxes. An awful lot of the time people build new schools based on the new fad and they're stuck with a school that 50 years from now is not the way they want to educate. Students come together in the middle of the building where they are able to have a lot of agency and a lot of places to be, but it's very easy to supervise. And when it comes to the facilities, also considering the future, such as having electrical vehicle docking and producing enough renewable energy to meet its own energy consumption, known as net zero. That's actually a very aggressive target for a building of this size and for a site that we have that's constrained. Another uh, key element of our, our goals related to energy is to, to design for an all-electric building. Currently, the building is heated with natural gas. Um, our goal is to, uh, is to have a building that doesn't rely on fossil fuels. But concerns from residents about the now, with impact on taxes expected to be an $827 a year on the average single-family home for the school, and it comes just after property owners saw their tax bills go up this year due to higher assessed values, an average of 14 percent over last year's. You've got a lot of people in town that are upset right now with the condition of the finances, and I think any effort to get it down under to make it look like you're doing, them some, doing somebody a favor. Town manager Adam Chapdelaine pulling out a cost comparison chart showing other recent high school projects that are pretty similar to Arlington's cost per square foot. Some less, some more. Some took issue with that, but it also in the high school includes town departments that can't go anyplace else. And as another pointed out, it's a unique site. Were there other communities where a high school was built on a site that spanned a cliff? like 20 to 30 foot difference. Um, sites where there was a brook running underneath it, sites where there was a history of contamination in the soils. These are things that we have to contend with at the site that make it very different than you would have in other communities. 
When one person asked for a show of hands of those in favor of the project, the majority went up. And the cost of not building the high school now, while it's on track to get about $100 million from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, even higher in more ways than one. We then face accreditation visit, uh, and we would have to come up with a plan as a town to fund a substantial reconstruction of that site with our own money, without state money. That's what we would have to do. Do you think if we had an uncredited high school, you think it might affect the value of the homes in Arlington where people want to come in and buy? I think it would, yeah. <clears throat>
Yeah, Hess hit a couple of three-pointers in the game Tuesday night against Wilmington. Gascoigne up and under with the left hand, couldn't get it to go. Nortellis is ahead of the pack, and he lays it in with the left hand. I gotta say, I'm not in love with that shot by Gascoigne. I hope he's not feeling frustrated there. Uh, that was, uh, you know, he did not have that shot. 26-19 ponders. 5-40 remaining third quarter. Mm. The Corrales got bottled up there, tried to take the shot and hoped to get the call, did not. Here comes Marchant. Marchant, little floater, gets the roll. And all of a sudden, offense is broken off. We have a game of runs, and right now, it's the Rockets that are running. It might be almost as many points as we had in the first half in the first three minutes of this third quarter. 26-21 Ponders. Gascoigne's going to take the little jump shot, front rim, and he gets the shooter's touch. So three of Gascoigne's buckets have come from the outside. It's not characteristic, but it is welcome. That ball stripped away by Arlington. Miles has to McNamara. McNamara is going to go, flip it up with the right hand. Arlington bench wanted the foul. They didn't get it, but Brendan McNamara has the layup. He has five in the pond. His lead by nine. They're the largest lead of the game all of a sudden. Great body control by McNamara, getting that to go, falling away from the hoop, but having the presence to still get it up there and kiss it off the glass, swish it home. Potter's bearing down on defense. And an offensive foul will be called against Redding. Illegal screen set, I believe, either by Marchant. I think no. that was... I think that was Conroy. It he, is. He kind of threw his elbow a little bit and shoulder. hoped the ref did, threw his shoulder, hoped the ref didn't uh, didn't see it. That's the kind of thing that can enhance the chippiness of this game. I got to say, I don't mind that. That's a great call. I didn't quite see it, but you could see the referee immediately make a motion with his shoulder to say that he shouldered into the Arlington player in the uh, offensive foul called. Let's kick it back down to Rich. Hey guys, you know, just looking at how this third quarter started, we are seeing a game of runs. But one thing I do like six, is that one, Corrales four, is looking zero, for Gascoin nine. now. Because with Gascoin, I mean, the guys hit three threes this game. So I feel like, you know, Corrales kind of struggling a little bit to get six, his, you know, his shot going. Four, zero, the best nine, thing he can do right now is get his other guys going. That's where his strength is, setting guys up to make plays. And Coin's got the hot hand right now from three fellas. I think a Gascoigne Thanks, is a player who likes to do work on the block, and uh, that uh, could, you know, that could be a little bit more of his role. But he's showing a broad skill set tonight. Gascoigne can shoot it, two big threes, and a nice twenty footer there, and that can be helpful because with the size of uh, the Reading Rockets, I got a feeling that their bigs don't like to play defense away from the hoop. So nine points by Ponder lead. Redding took that timeout. They're second. Each team has taken two timeouts. And we're almost halfway through the third quarter. Arlington with their largest lead of the game. Nick Corrales. You got Nortellis on Gascoigne. Feed Gascoigne. He should be able to go to work down there against Nortellis. He does indeed. He has a difficult time getting that shot off. He had to adjust his shot in the air as the Reading players came over to help Nortellis too. No, no, tell us. We'll take it to Little Gascoigne comes flying in to block it. But he'll be called for the foul on the play. A lot of effort, a lot of energy for Gascoigne and the spy ponders there. Too bad it resulted in another foul. Let's see if they can stay out of foul trouble in this half. Yeah, that's James's third also. So Coach Bowler is going to go to the bench as Jelani Joshua is at the table ready to check in. You don't want to have to play this style of game, kind of chippy, aggressive for an extended period of time without a James Gascoigne. Nortellis misses his first free throw. Joshua, though, was tough and physical in the first half. One of two for the senior, Jovan Nortellis. He has five points, leading scorer with Taylor Marchant for the Rockets. So Arlington now with two of their starters on the bench with three fouls. McGilvery lays it in. And McGilvery doing work underneath. Another little left-hander. I think it's third or maybe fourth lefty of the ball game. He must be left-handed. Oh, Nortellis with a beautiful baseline drive lays it in. I like the defense came to help, but Nortellis was just too quick to the rim. 32-24 ponders. His McNamara to the basket lays it in. And all of a sudden, once again, we have a track meet. Points are coming in bunches, and 
Colin McNamara taking the ball to the rack. 34-24 Arlington now. That 10-point lead is their largest of the game. Did I say Colin? I meant Brendan. Sorry, Brendan. Well, of course, we saw Colin do that for four years here, and now yep. brother Brendan is doing it. McGilvery got his hand in the cookie jar there. He'll be called for the foul. Count the basket. And Danny Beckenhaus will go to the line with a chance for three points. Excuse me, not Beckenhaus. It is um, Sanella with a chance for a three-point play. A lot of dribbling by Sanella, but he took the challenge. Both uh, Corrales and McNamara are playing physical man-to-man -man defense and pressuring the ball. And Sanella said that time, all right, I'm just going to try to go around you. And he was able to do it. Sanella able to complete the three-point play. And the Ponders lead by seven with under three minutes remaining in this third quarter. And McGilvery bottled up, gets it out. Hess is going to take that three. He's going to make that three. Miles Hess with a big basket for the Ponders, and they regain a 10-point lead. And that's the kind of shot that I think Coach Bowler likes to see. The defense collapse, you inside out offense. Hess with the open shot and buried it. Arlington now in this third quarter with 18 points, almost matching their total for the entire first half. Good drive there by Sinella. No ball knocked out of bounds by Beckenhaus. It'll be Arlington ball. See McGivray's aggressiveness on the underneath on the offense drew in a lot of defense, and that's the that's the payoff with a guy like that who's looking to be aggressive in the paint and hits four or five shots. Now they got to respect that. Yep, he's been some unexpected offense so far tonight. Now Beckenhaus comes out to try to play defense on McNamara, and he commits the blocking foul. I believe that will be his third. Viewers who watch the football broadcast not know that McGiveaway is uh, one of my favorite football players. He plays wide receiver and linebacker. And as a wide receiver, his trademark is yards after the catch. He's a guy who is not easy to bring down, and he's playing that style, bringing that style to the basketball court. He'll get a break right now as number five, Elon signs Grant, checks into the Ponder lineup. Corrales baseline, tried the no-look pass, did not work. Redding has a player ahead of the pack, Nortellis. But unfortunately, number three, Owen Mulvey, throws it away. Break there for Allington as Redding might have had an easy two had that pass connected. So both bigs out of the game for Redding. Let's see if the Ponders can get some inside out offense here. First effort inside to Joshua, who's guarded by Nortellis. He's got a little bit of a size advantage on Nortellis, but unable to convert. Nortellis might be a little taller, but I think yeah. Joelani Joshua has him in the bulk factor. Made a good power move down low, just couldn't get it to go. 37-27 Ponders, minute 19 remaining in this third quarter. That's a tough shot by Marchant with a little pull-up jumper, and he hits it. Taylor Marchant now with seven, tying Nortellis for high point honors for the Rockets. And Redding hanging around here, 37-29, with exactly one minute to go, third quarter. Marchant's a nifty little player. He's got a good mid-range game. McNamara for a long three from the corner, no. Sonella with the rebound, the co-captain of the Rockets. He goes all the way to the rack and lays it in. Matt Sonella now with eight. The Pondas find themselves up just by six. About a 12 second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. So Allenson cannot hold for a final shot here. Now Joshua just holds the ball and I think that Owen Mulvey had the right idea to try to tie him up for a held ball, but unfortunately he fouled him instead and not a smart foul there because what that does, Rob, is it resets the shot clock and now Arlington can hold for a final shot should they choose. Hmm. My first thought was maybe he was trying to give a foul there. It looked like it. Yeah. If he was trying to, that's how he would do it. But as you point out, Don, not too smart. Yeah, he was trying to get a held ball. Didn't work. But now Arlington loses possession here. Here comes Mulvey. Going to get it from a four, Sahijan. He hit a, a big three in the first half. Number four for the Rockets. And now with 10 seconds remaining in the quarter, let's see what Redding can do. Each team with three team fouls. Well, he dribbled right into the double team. McNamara has the ball three seconds, too. Let's see if he gets it up. He does count the basket. And Brendan McNamara will go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. Machat commits the foul. 
McNamara sparking the team with a steal, going coast to coast, landed up and in with his left hand. And once again, points at the very end of a quarter uh, are the are the spy punter's friend. The clock shows one tenth of again. a second again. That's just how they ended the first half. That is amazing. You know, oh no, they're going to going to put a little bit more time on there. They're going to give eight tenths of a second remaining, and that's significant because if he makes the shot, that will allow. Redding to inbound the ball and maybe get a decent shot off here. Not likely, but possible. Of course, if McNamara misses the free throw, it'll be really tough for Redding to get a shot off. Let's see what happens. McNamara, front rim on the free throw, and now a rebounding foul against Sines Grant? I think so. Oh, boy. Lucky they're not in the bonus situation. They would have given an opportunity for points right back. So the punters are up by eight, and four of those eight have come in the last second of the second and third quarter. Half a second remaining, Redding does not get off that final shot, and that will be the end of the third quarter. The score at the end of three, Allington 39, Redding 31 will go down to Rich. Well, I'll take it, uh, Don. I, um, great, great half. A little offense broke out for the for the packed house here at the Tozlowski Gymnasium. That's a little bit more fun to watch. First half was a slugfest. The second half was a game of runs. Both teams got on track, and the Spy Pawners uh, from three-point land a little bit. Swift hit a couple big ones, and Brennan McNamara hit one. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's always fun to see some points, and the, the Spy Pawners got a little bit of separation. I don't know what you saw down there, Rich. Yeah, guys, I mean, especially uh, McNamara, I, I like the way how he was able, you know, to get to the rim. The first time he got to the rim, he got those two points. It could have been an and one, two, like he got on the second one. I feel like the steal and him being able to run down the floor and get those two points, it's what Arlington does best, you know, creating offense from defense. And then I think they've done a better job of, you know, kind of containing the offense because when you what you're seeing from Redding is the guy who's getting most of their points or the attention is Nortellis. But if you can keep Nortellis out of the paint because he likes to drive, now you're asking these other guys to try to make plays. And I think that's kind of what's allowed, you know, Arlington to sort of stretch the lead a little bit. They're doing a little better containing Nortellis. And I feel like if they yeah. continue to do that and, you know, not foul the way they weren't doing in the third quarter, they'll be just yeah. fine. Thank you, Rich. Now, Gascoigne with the up and under couldn't get the roll in the ensuing action. I think there's going to be a rebounding foul against Allington. It's going to go against Nick Corrales. And very interesting there, Rob, if you look at the point totals, Allington scored 20 in the third quarter. They scored 19 in the first half. Reading scored 16 in the third quarter. They scored 15 in the entire first half for them. So both teams in one quarter had more points than they did in the first half. Wow. But pretty interesting. And the Spy Potters were able to hold the fort with Gascoigne on the bench. He's back in the ball game. Uh, Spy Potter Nation likes to see that. As is Swift. Sam Swift back into the Allington lineup. But also in the Allington lineup is number 20, Philip Cherry Jr. And a three-point shot there by Mulvey closes the gap for the Rockets. It's 39-34, Ponders. This is not the kind of team that's uh, apparently going to be easy to put away tonight. No, the refrigerator. The refrigerator door there. is wide open. Correct. Gascoigne will turn around, no. Signs Grant fights for the rebound. And another rebounding foul will be called against Allington. And let's see if this goes against Gascoigne or against Signs Grant. If it goes against James, that'll be his fourth. And I think it did. Yeah. And he'll get a quick exit. Yeah, James Gascoigne picks up foul number four, team foul number six for the Ponders. So that's also a problem because now Redding will be in the bonus for the duration of the game. So this is going to be tough sledding for Allington with seven minutes to go, playing without their all-league player who has four fouls. He'll come back in at some point. Let's see when Coach Bowler will go to. Moby's going to try another three. This one's not good. Conroy with the rebound. He's going to get a held ball. And on the alternating possession rule, it will be Redding ball. You like that call? Yes, it's the correct call. Wasn't a foul, wasn't a travel. I guess the alternative would, would have been a play on. Right. Couldn't really go with the play on, though, because he landed with the ball. So it was either had to be a travel or a held ball. Yep. The shot there is missed by Redding. McGilvery with another rebound for Arlington. Gats going on the bench. We look for uh, Swift and McNamara to be assertive with the basketball.
Swift and McNamara both look like they understand the situation. McGillivray kicks it out to Philip Terry Jr. for three. He got knocked down on the shot. The referees don't have anything on that, but Allenton gets the offensive rebound in another possession. Now it looks like Philip Cherry Jr. and Mulvey down low getting into it a little bit. McNamara kicks it into the corner to Phillip. Baseline drive up under, no. Rebound fought, but Jelani Joshua has it. And now a foul will be called against Redding. And Coach Morrissey is furious about something for Redding. I'm impressed by the spy ponders and their ability to kind of execute with some calm here. The uh, Reading Rockets are really bringing it, and that's the kind of defensive intensity that you really can't simulate in practice. It's got a, you see it on game night, and it feels, you know, kind of a little bit different, but the spy ponders are keeping their head, running their plays, getting their shots, doing a good job with it. Taylor Marchant commits that foul, his third. Now it looks like Arlington committed a violation on the inbounding play. So this game has had some really strange things happen in it. And um, it's, a, it's a difficult game. And let's see if Arlington can do what needs to be done to pull this rock fight out. They lead by five with 5.55 to go fourth quarter. McGilvery is on Nortellis. He stripped it away from him. Sonella comes up with it and goes to the rack and lays it in with the left hand. Nice move by Sonella that time. He was... Uh yeah, assertive, did a little bit of a Euro step and laid it in. So now now with 10, the only player for Redding in double figures. Gascoigne, the only Allison player in double figures. Now Joshua has it down low. Philip Cherry Jr., little pull up Jay. No, Joshua off his leg and out of bounds. I like the assertiveness of uh, Terry Jr. there. He had the sh he had the shot. He's uh, the against this pressure defense. You want to make the pressure pay, and you want to be able to beat somebody off the dribble. And that's what Terry Jr. did twice. Unfortunately, he couldn't get the shot to go down. Miles Hess into the Allenton lineup. He replaces Philip Terry Jr. So right now you have Sam Swift, Stephen McGilvery, Miles Hess, Jelani Joshua, and Brendan McNamara. The five for the Ponders. Inside, a little nice little play there by Redding and Beckenhaus with a nice lay in, a little finger roll, and Allenton's lead is just one with exactly five minutes remaining in the contest. And with five minutes left, you wonder how long Coach Waller's going to leave James Gascoigne on the bench. Not much longer. McNamara's going to take a fadeaway through. That's a very difficult shot. Came up a little bit short. Nortellis ahead of the pack. He's unable to come up with it, but he saves it. Sonella for three, yes, and Redding has the lead. Wow, first lead of the ball game for the Redding Rockets, and Redding Rockets are bringing the heat defensively and bringing the intensity, and all of a sudden, the, the basket is opening up for them, and punters are in a little bit of trouble here. Rich, what are you seeing from down there? Hey, guys, from what I'm seeing right now, I just think, like, you know, Redding, it's just the second chance opportunities. They're getting those rebounds in. I just feel like it's time, you know, for coach to put this, you know, to put the guys back in. You got to get Gascoigne back in there because he's able to, you know, kind of be into the rim and get boards for Arlington. So I think it's just time, you know, even with the four fouls, you know, like you were saying, there's only a few minutes left in the game. I think it's just time to put Gascoigne in. He can hit from behind the arc. He's good inside the paint when it comes to getting rebounds. So I think you just got to put your anchor back out there. Reading is, uh, the, the Rockets are overplaying the Spy Ponders on, uh, you know, defensively. And it's, I believe, time for they, if they have some backdoor cuts in the arsenal, uh, set some screens, open some guys that way because, uh, the, you know, the Rockets are going all in for the basketball. Yeah, Coach Bola took that time out. He took it for two reasons. Number one, to talk to his team and slow the momentum down. But two, to get James Gascoigne back in the lineup. And it pays dividends right there as Gascoigne ties the game at 41. Bring in your senior captain, and he understood the situation and calmed the Ponders down immediately. We're tied at 41 with 4.13 remaining fourth quarter. Nice job there by Stephen McGilvery, knocking the ball away from Beckenhaus. Turnover. Some very rapid swings of momentum here. Turnover Redding, Allenton with a chance to reclaim the lead. They lost it temporarily, probably only the trailing for about five seconds of game time. Swift on the baseline drive, blocking foul. That will go against Patrick Conroy. That will give Redding six team fouls. So both teams now with six team fouls. And 
Foul shooting is certainly going to be a factor in the final 353 of the game as both teams are in the bonus. Oh, wow. Oh. Nice hustle there by Sanella with the steal on the inbounding play. Very rarely see that from Arlington. It's a turnover the Potters really couldn't afford. Mortellis. Beckenhouse is going to kick it to Sanella for another three. That one's off. McNamara with the rebound. Three and a half minutes to go. Tied at 41. Potters need a good shot right here. McNamara. McNamara fakes the three, now he takes a pull-up jumper, and he hits. Ice water in his vein, McNamara is feeling the flow of the game, was not too small for the situation. They needed that bucket, he delivered. Two-point lead for the Ponders. And now a timeout will be called by Redding. We haven't seen a lot of open shots, Don. That almost, you, you kind of wonder what happened. That, that almost looked weird, I, and it might have felt weird for McNamara having the open shot, but, you know, he he buried it. Well, he he created the opening because he faked the three. He thought about the three. The defender was there, so he, he decided not to take it, and then he dribbled to his left and took a very, very difficult shot going to his left to give Arlington the lead. So if you're Redding here, you're uh, on the road. It's 43-41 with three minutes left to go. You, li you like where you are a little bit. Um, you fought your way to a, a tight game in a rock fight. Now what we're going to see is which player, which player is trusted by the Redding Rockets because it's not really clear that they have a hot hand right now. It's not really clear where their offense is going to come from. So they're going to have to kind of figure out what their best opportunity to get points are because they need some coming down the stretch. Well, in the second half, it's been Sanella quite a bit, quite honestly, Rob. He had three yeah. first half points. He's had 10 here in the second half. He hit a couple of threes. Right. And um, he's done a nice job keeping the Rockets in this game. I guess he is the hot hand. I believe just, well, take that back. Just one three for Sanella, but ten second half points. Matchup for Corrales here. Three minutes remaining in the game. Arlington by two. Oh, bad decision there by Sanella. And great anticipation by Swift with the steal. You mentioned he plays defensive back. Is that what you said? Yeah, yes, and he showed it there. There it was right there. McNamara to the left. He's going to take a difficult shot around. No. Rebound by Sanella. He dribbles out of traffic, but no. Corrales with the steal. Back to McNamara. Back to McGillivray. Lift the left hand. No. Rebound fought up by Gascoigne. And now Allenton can reset the offense. They came up empty there, but they did create the turnover. And now it's their ball with a two-point lead. Would have been nice if they could have capitalized, but at least they retained possession. Exciting sequence and swift, difficult shot. No. Rebound by Conway. Stolen by Krauss. Around the back to McGillivray. He lays it up and in. What a play by Nick Corrales. The steal in the around the back pass. Sanella trying to answer with three. No. And Arlington with the rebound. And now a little bit of a comfort zone for the Ponders. A four-point lead with two minutes to go. Outstanding play by Nick Corrales. Two times in a row he picked the ball and got his teammates good shot. What a pass around behind the back to the open player. Nick Corrales comes up big deep in this ball game. And now a foul committed by Redding. I believe that's against number 24, Beckenhaus. That is his third. And again, with Allington being in the bonus, free throws will determine the outcome of this game for both teams. So Corrales is the senior captain. I want to credit him with some heady play. On the possession before, there was a scramble for the ball underneath, and uh, Ponders missed a few short shots, kicked it back to Corrales, and he had the presence of mind to give up the three and reset the offense. McGilvery unable to hit the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. We just confirmed that he is indeed left-handed. That foul shot confirmed that. Yes. So all his left-handed baskets are just. And he's got 10 points tonight. Sanella got trapped there. Good defense. Oh, he did a great job. Oh, and a block by Swift. Rebound again. Another block by Swift. What defense by the Ponders. There's a great no-look pass from the top of the key down low. But Swift was there. Once again, the big pick by Sam Switz, and that time the big block. A minute 17 to go, Ponders by four, 15 on the shot clock. McGilvery sets the high screen for McNamara. McNamara goes, gets bottled up. Swift, five on the shot clock. Gascoigne, someone's gonna have to shoot it. It's gonna be Nick, no, he couldn't get it off. McGilvery's gonna have to take, excuse me, Swift from way far away, and it'll be a shot clock violation against Arlington. 
Well, the, the, the first best thing that they could have done on that possession was score. The second best thing they could have done on that, that possession is use 30 seconds. Right. And they used all 30 seconds. We are under a minute. 58.6 seconds remaining. Allington by four. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. Oh, and a timeout was called when Nortellis had a wide open three from the base. I don't know if that's his shot, but you know, down four with 52 seconds. It wouldn't have been a horrible time for Redding to attempt the three. Hey Rich, final thoughts for this final 52.4 seconds from you? Yeah guys, you know, just kind of what I'm seeing right now, I think that, you know, they're in a pretty good spot as far as the lead goes. What I want Arnton to do now, make sure you have an eye on Ortelis. You know, he's been kind of their best scorer this entire half. I know, I know, you know, Sunnell's kind of gotten a rhythm himself, but Nartellus is the guy that has no fear when it comes to going to the rim. Make him be an outside shooter. Lock the paint down. Make him hit a shot from the outside, and you live with the results. Thank you very much, Rich. And so, with 52.4 seconds remaining, we'll be running ball here directly in front of us. 24 seconds on their shot clock. Reading down by four. Again, both teams are in the bonus for the duration of the game. And let's see how this final 52.4 plays out. They don't need a three here. It wouldn't be uh, crazy for them to drive to the hoop and try to get the two and a couple of free throws at worst case. Definitely. Nick Corrales looking for the five second. Oh, my shot might have got away with a little travel there. And now... We're going to get a foul against Arlington. It looked like Conroy may have been ready to travel, but they're going to say that the foul occurred before the travel. And I'm not sure who that foul was called against. I think it was called against Nick Corrales, his third. And you're right, uh, Marchand might have gotten away with the travel also. It looked like Marchand had, uh, had a little bit of an open three, and he can hit that open three. About that. And an apple was in my throat, but I think Paul Morrissey probably had told him at the, at the timeout, listen guys, we don't need a three. Right. Conroy hits the front end of the one and one Clutch free throw there by the senior Patrick Conroy. Conroy, excuse me, and with 35.9 seconds to go, it's a one possession game. He's only going to get one of the two. Gascoigne with a big rebound. So Allington cannot run this thing down to zero. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what Redding wants to do with a five second differential between the clocks, if they go the foul route or not. Because if they, if Allington holds, Redding will only have about five seconds to get off a final shot and they're down by three. I think if I was Redding, I might have tried to extend this game a little bit more. The bucket will close it out. We open the refrigerator. Swift, five on the shot clock. McNamara to the basket, lays it in! And a timeout call by Redding. What a great job by the Allington offense. They ran the shot clock down to almost zero. McNamara gets the lay-in, and that's going to put this game away, and the Ponders are going to win. And Brandon McNamara has uh, showed great court awareness in the second half and really done a nice job sensing when he had a lane to the hoop and putting it in when he had a lane to the hoop. Brandon McNamara playing like a senior, although only a sophomore, and uh, needed very much at this time. Couldn't have gone any better for Allington there, Grob. They worked the whole clock down. They got a game-clinching basket. And all now Allington has to do now is Redding is out of timeouts. So all Allington has to do is let Redding take the ball, score, and leave the ball alone. There's nothing Redding can do to extend the game. Because well, by the time Redding scores, there'll be under five seconds left in the game. Allington has five seconds by rule to get the ball in bounds. So hopefully Coach Bowler told his players, let him score and leave the ball alone. That's all he has to do. Just let him go. Who cares about this? Shot off the good. Nope, my share with the rebound. And that will close it out. So all that did was change the final score. But the Pondas played it perfectly down the stretch. And they come away with a victory in what is a very, very difficult and hard-nosed game. We'll kick it down to Rich for his final thought, and then Rob and I will come back. Rich, what do you got? Hey, guys. I really feel like Arlington, they showed a lot of maturity and poise down the stretch, especially, um, you know, considering McNamara. He is a sophomore, like you said, but he was able to kind of show a lot of court awareness in the second half. He knew when to pick his spots to shoot. He knew when to make that pass. He was there when it came to getting those steals. I think that he really did a great job of kind of controlling the flow of the game and really opening things up for their offense. 
And I feel like, you know, everyone else just kind of like did their role. They didn't foul in the fourth quarter, and that allowed them to kind of, you know, keep their lead and extend it just enough that they didn't have to worry, you know, in the coming seconds of the game. I think they showed a lot of poise, and they should be very proud of themselves. Both teams played hard, but I thought, you know, it was a great, it was a great win, you know, by the Spy Ponders today. Yeah, I thought it was a rock fight. Good points, Rich. I thought it was a rock fight. Spy Ponders coming into the game expected a physical game. They got a physical game. And getting a physical game, they did a good job kind of keeping their heads. And uh, this is the kind of game, if you're the Spy Ponders, that you want to win. It, it gives them good experience against a physical team on their home court. It wasn't easy. The metaphor that comes to my own mind, it was like a restless sleep. It was hard ever to get real traction. They had a couple of spurts where things went their way. But for the most part, they had to really work for it and fight for it. When you have to fight for it and you come up uh, come up big and get the win, that always feels extra special. We're going to run down tonight's scoring summary for Reading. Jovan Nortellis had seven points. Owen Mulvey, six. Tim Sahesian, three. High scorer for the Rockets was Matt Sinella with 13. Danny Beckenhouse with four. Patrick Conroy with two. Taylor Marchant with nine. And a total of 44. For your spy partners, Nick Corrales had two. Miles Hess had three. Jelani Joshua had two. Sam Swift, who was saddled by foul trouble tonight, he was held to just three points, but it was a big three-pointer that he hit early in the second half. Stephen McGilvery with 10 points. Joey Pazia, did I mention him, with two. James Gascoigne with 12. High point man for Arlington was Brendan McNamara, but I'm going to go with my ACMI player of the game tonight. I'm going to give it to Stephen McGilvery with 10 points. Stephen not really uh, known for his offense here for the Spy Ponders, but he chips in with 10 very, very necessary points, and I'm going to give him my player of the game honors. So that will wrap things up for now, and uh, Rob and I will be back with some post-game guests. Final score here tonight, Arlington 47 and Reading 44. Thank you, Rich Damas, for your sideline reporting, and Rob and I will be back in a moment. My name is Max Deluca, and if you're interested in pursuing a career in sports media, come on down to Studio B at 892 Mass Ave in Arlington. And welcome back to the Taz. Ponders uh, pulled out the tough win, and I'm Rob Anthony. I'm here with uh, Steve McGivelray. And uh, Steve, first of all, congratulations on the win and also for being the ACMI uh, player of the game tonight. Thank you. Thank you. So you scored a season-high 10 points. Uh, we don't normally think of you as the primary scorer, but you had a lot of good opportunities, and you really capitalized. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, if that, uh, what, like, in the fourth quarter, that pass from Nick, that was uh, – just my teammates getting me easy baskets and just finishing around the rim, it was key. What would you say is your shot, the shot that when you have it, this is my go-to, I know I could sink it, because you didn't miss many tonight. Definitely the, uh, being a lefty, definitely the, the lefty hook in the post. Uh -huh. I, I, I've been practicing that since like fifth grade. And it came in handy tonight. And I'll also say that I enjoyed watching you play football, uh, Steve, and that football experience came in handy tonight. This was a rock fight. Yeah, it was. It was. It definitely came in handy. A fifth physical team out there. It was came in handy. All right. All right. Well, congratulations, and uh, thanks for stopping Thank by. You. All right. Now we'll go with, uh, with uh, James Gascoigne. Senior Captain James Gascoigne and James, first of all, congratulations on the big win. Thank you. So it got a little chippy out there. Yeah. Talk to us about the the, uh, the the physicality and maybe even some of your frustrations. Well, Reading always plays hard, and I guess that just kind of got in my head a little bit. Kids were wrapping me up, stuff like that, and I just kind of let that affect me too much. Well, you played very effectively and contributed big time to the win. Uh, you had some foul trouble. Yeah. Are you aware of that as a player? How does the foul trouble enter into how you play? Um, yeah, I started thinking about it in the game once I get one or two on me. I definitely start considering it. Uh, I just, just a little less aggressive on D. I mean, move my feet a little more, stop the reaching, stuff like that. And I'll also say you showed a very broad skill set. Uh, you were you stepped out, you hit two big threes, another big 20-footer. Uh, that sh that shot, we don't see it a lot, but it's something that it looks like you have a lot of confidence in. Yeah, well, I mean, here I'm, I'm mostly playing the four or the five, so like I don't get out on the perimeter too much. But, yeah, I think I can knock it down a good amount. Awesome. Well, you knocked it down tonight, and you got the big win. Congratulations. All right, thank you. All right. So we'll go with Sam Swift. 
We, we got a little visitor there, Sam. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. So you had some foul trouble too, and I gotta, I'll, I will divulge that up here in the booth, we were a little bit worried uh, because uh, your ability to stretch the floor was important to this team. What, uh, how, did, how did foul trouble impact your game? Um, I mean, it's hard to get in the flow, but I trust my teammates, and uh, it's a huge team win for us. It's all about team. If, I, if I'm in foul trouble, I trust Miles. I trust Phil to go out there and just do the same thing that I'm doing, play hard. Yeah, and I guess you guys knew it would be a physical game uh, coming into the game. What is, what is winning a close, hard-fought contest do for this team going forward? Uh, the coaches emphasized playing 32 minutes the whole game, nonstop, just get, uh, getting on the floor. They told us we were getting outworked in the first half, even though we were up, and uh, sort of that we needed to come out with like a second, ev second effort, second energy, just uh, to close out this game. Yeah, and you, you had three points, Sam, but your defense was outstanding. You showed those defensive back skills in a physical game with a, with a pick and a swat. Um, good all-around play for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So I will now hand you to uh, Don Phelan and uh, Coach Bowler is here. Uh, thank you, Coach. And uh, Don and Coach will give us their thoughts. Thank you, Rob. And our final guest tonight is Coach Bowler. Coach Bowler, congratulations on consecutive regular season home win, I believe, number 48. Yeah, yeah no, it's, you know, it's a good, you know, I mean, they, Reading always play this tough. They're very physical, and uh, it's always a good game with them. You know, I was glad we, you know, we were able to come up on top. Looked like uh, you got some unexpected offense tonight from Stephen McGilvery, and boy, you really needed it. Uh, fantastic game from him, especially with Sam being in a little bit of foul trouble, so you didn't get much offense from him. You got the usual out of out of uh, Brendan and um, and James, but uh, you got some extra some extra points from J uh, Stephen tonight. Yes, yeah, Stephen Steve did a great job, you know, uh, scoring in on the glass. He had some huge rebounds. Uh, you know, Stephen when Stephen gets it, he makes he makes simple, quick, decisive moves, and um, you know, he made he made he made some huge baskets for us tonight. Now from a coaching perspective, it was kind of an odd game. Uh, the third quarter, the, the, finally uh, uh, some scoring broke out. I think both teams scored more points in the third quarter than they had in the first half combined total. What was different in the third quarter? And then again in the fourth quarter, it became more of a defensive game. What was different about the third quarter from a coaching standpoint as opposed to the other three quarters? Yeah, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's weird. Sometimes you, you, know, you come out and you, you can't score, and then you can you know, score 20 points in a quarter, which is pretty good. Sure. Uh, you know, I think we did, you know, at halftime we kind of stressed, you know, moving the ball. We, you know, we stuck to just one, like, transition offense, and we just stuck with it the whole time. And we did a good job getting the ball side to side, getting the ball low, you know, moving the ball. Where in the first half I think we kind of, you know, dribbled too much, took too long getting into our plays. You know, they did a good job in the first half of, catch, you know, pushing us out of the spots where we wanted to catch the ball. And I thought in the third quarter we did a good job of, you know, getting the ball where we needed to get the ball, you know, to make good offensive moves and, like, you know, passes or shots. And we talked before the holiday break about what a strange uh, schedule you had this year. You had, I believe, five consecutive road games, including a couple that were in a tournament, but they were away games. And now you're in the midst of a four-game homestand. Uh, must be good to be able to play a few, a row, few in a row here at the Tarzlowski Gymnasium. Oh, yeah, it's huge. I mean, I think, we, you know, like we, we, have, we have a lot of success here. We had a good crowd. Uh, you know, I think we're very comfortable playing here. And, um, you know, yeah, the, the schedule is a little odd this year. But, you know, I think, it, you know, right now it's working out for us. Excellent, Coach Ball. Thank you for joining us once again, and uh, good luck Tuesday night. That'll be the next Spy Ponder game will be this Tuesday night against Cathedral High School. Now, that's a 7 o'clock start here because it's a non-league game, so we are able to have a 7 o'clock start time for that one. So that's going to wrap things up here tonight from the Tazlowski Gymnasium. What a fantastic night. We had the girls game live. We had the boys game live. And uh, a lot of shout-out to a lot of people. I want to make sure I get everybody the credit where credit is due. Kevin Wetmore, uh, Alex Van Thong was our producer tonight. We had several uh, volunteers volunteer people on camera. I'd like to thank them as well. I had Rob Anthony assisting me here above courtside, and we had uh, Rich Damas at courtside. So a fun night here for the Spy Ponders. The girls, unfortunately, didn't get the victory, but the boys did. So again, that's going to end things here tonight. Thanks for joining us. The final score here tonight, Arlington 47 and Reading 44. <laughs>